Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Valentine's Day edition of the uh, Scorch Fest, where we take a look at websites, landing pages, and try to figure out how to make them more effective. So uh, today's theme, of course, is love. So uh, how do we use love in our marketing? And the first one we're going to look at is uh, SoCalVirtualTours.net. You should see it up in front of you. And let me see if I can get Kurt unmuted. Hello, Kurt. Are you there? Do you have audio? Not hearing anything. If you're talking, it doesn't seem to be working. Uh, all right, we're we're away. So let's take this uh, this brief moment of of technical catch up to uh, to ground ourselves for the day. Take a deep breath in and relax it out. If you're if you're sitting hunched over, you might want to extend your shoulders back and down, loosen your jaw. I'm saying this for myself as much as for anyone else. So to come into into easy, gentle presence here today. Um, while we're waiting for Kurt, another another word or two about uh, about love, love marketing. Jesus. So, uh, one of the things that I like to think about when I create a website is the person who's going to be coming there, and what are they wanting when they get there? What are they missing? And you know, nobody has too much love in their life. But if you, if you land on a place where you really feel like there is a, uh, what do I want to say? If people care about you, if they're not just in it for the money, if they're not just in it because they don't know what else to do with their lives, but they're really here in, in a mission and service, um, that goes a long way. That can, that can overcome a lot of doubts, a lot of fear issues, a lot of lack of trust. Um, it can heal a lot of past um, woundings of things that have happened to you when you've, when you've tried to buy something or when you've worked with someone and you felt like you got betrayed, like it wasn't, it wasn't a, uh, a trustworthy situation. Um, so one of the things we want to think about is how can we show the people who come to our site that we really do care about them. And... Um, you know, in, in my field, in internet marketing, there's kind of a, at least when, when, when gurus get together or when we go to uh, the conferences and people present, there's a, a strong underlying current of basically people are idiots. And so we try to create our businesses to accommodate the fact that people are idiots. And what, what, what people mean by that is they don't know how to fill out the form, they don't know what button to press, they're confused. They're going to buy the package from us and never, you know, take off the shrink wrap. They're lazy. They'd rather sit on the couch and watch TV. And while there's a, there's a certain measure of truth to the fact that human beings are frail, that we are sometimes afraid to try new things, we, some, we get confused frequently in new situations, um, and yet turning it into a kind of disdain, uh, I think really limits your ability both to successfully market and to serve and to form a relationship over time. Um, so with, with that, uh, Kurt, I don't see any possibility of getting you audio. You've sort of grayed out. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's try can that. Wait, can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Okay. No, All right. Are you calling me from California? Yeah. It's like, wow. It's good job. Way, way to wake up early for this. Yeah. <laughs> I had this such an alarm. All right. So if you could speak up a little more, because I think I'm going to so be much me, louder than you on the uh, on the audio okay. recording. So if you could. Uh, let me do my. Uh, I'm on. I call it dialed in on Skype to get the audio to work. Okay. Great. Oh, let me see if I can set this volume. Okay. I don't know if that's going to work. Can you hear me? Uh, yep, sounds pretty good. Oh, okay. All right, so uh, so SoCalVirtualTours.net. Tell me about this business. Um, I'm a real estate photographer part-time now because of the state of the economy and the real estate market. 
But anyway, I set this thing up because I was uh, subcontracting for a company that's up in uh, Spokane, Washington. And they uh, eliminated me from their website as a photographer, so I had to do something to try to get business. So anyway, I set this thing up, and I kind of based it on another website that I really liked. And it's HTML. I used a little WYSIWYG builder to uh, put the thing together and just uploaded it to my uh, to HostGator, which hosts my sites. Okay. Anyways, these are just samples of houses that I took, and it's basically to you know get a real estate uh, agent to uh, pique their interest and give me a call to use me as a photographer. Gotcha. Um, so you're you're promoting this to realtors? Yes. It's and you say a, if I if I take the pictures. You, you will sell the house faster for more money? Uh, basically, yes. A lot of people like uh, virtual tours these days, and some people just use them images just on their websites or the MLS listings for um, without a virtual tour, so I do either one, but these are just straight images. Okay, and do you create the tour and the website for them, or you just uh, give them the photos and they have to do it themselves? I usually just give them the photos, but uh, if they order a virtual tour, it, that's hosted on a different company. That's a company's uh, platform on their own server. Okay, and so you can you can do you can add that. Yes, that's that. an extra service that they pay for. Okay, great. So uh, I've got my on, on my second computer. I've got a bunch of quest questions up. So if folks have things to um, to add. See, Karen just posted a a comment. Feel free to to join the conversation. Uh, we can't have too many voices uh, doing audio at the same time because that uh, that overloads the system. But I can read out your comments and, if, if uh, appropriate, bring you in. Um, so Karen says there was a Wall Street Journal article in the Friday real estate section two weeks ago talked about how much more money people got for better photos in their real estate ads. So uh, like Kurt, that. did you happen to see that article? No, I didn't. All right, so you got a little bit of a research to do. Yeah. Um, you could probably, you know, as you're as you're as you're creating the value proposition, there's probably a lot of data out there. So you could start with that article and see who they reference and what data they get. Um, and this was from two week two weeks ago. That's what Karen says. Okay. So uh, if I know Karen, she's already on her computer looking for the link. To the <laughs> post. <laughs> so <laughs> she is a go getter. So. Uh, we we may have that before the webinar is out. Otherwise, I don't I don't imagine it would be too hard to Google. Right. Um, right. So as I so this is is this the page? Well, how do you get people to your site? Um, I use some pay per click, primarily, and then also I've gone for uh, uh, some backlinking, trying to get it on um, uh, organic listings as well. This one's not too successful. I have a couple of blogs also that are out there, and they. Uh, they seem to be a little more successful at getting some organic listing. Okay, cool. So, I, I, so what, what's your main keyword? Uh, now, probably real estate photography. Okay, and what sort of traffic does that get? In, and this is just the SoCal area. Uh, yeah, just for Southern California, Los Angeles, and Northern Orange, Orange County. Um, it probably gets uh, maybe a hundred hits a month, according to Google uh, Analytics keyword. Okay, and how many uh, inquiries does that uh, produce? Uh, for me, not much at all. You know, maybe one or two calls a month. Okay, so here's one thing. Um, I don't see any easy, I don't see you telling me what you want me to do, except down here in little letters below the fold, and I have a big-ass monitor here. Oh, but still, but still below the fold, it says call now to schedule your next photography session. And okay. if you didn't want them to call, you wouldn't put your phone number here, right? All right. So, so, so one thing. Just before we get into any of the the, the deeper psychological stuff, think about think about what you want that person to do, and make it easy for them to do. Okay. So, if you want them to get in their car and drive to your studio, you know, get in your car and drive it to your studio, you want the Door unlocked and the keys in the ignition. Right. Yeah. So look at look at all the ways in which you th you know, think about well what what do I want them to do? You have a little contact thing up here that disappears when I mouse over it. It turns a, a dark blue that's almost the same color as the 
the web, you know, the background, yeah. and, it, and I see from the lower left status bar, it, it opens up an email. Right. Um, I would much prefer you to have a form, and here you can see the telephone number. Uh, well, so I guess it, it, that's my computer. Yeah. It's, it's turned into a link that I can call with Google Voice. Um, but you, so you may want you may want to have that, but you also may want to have the telephone number um, as a as a graphic, so that my you know if it's Skype or Google Voice, I can't black it out because here, here it's oh, okay. you're, we're, any of those services that turn a phone number that what it thinks is a phone number on a website into a link is is going to turn it into a a standard blue link. So you okay. can see here it's just it's disappeared. Right. Um, also, here you have the email. It's all you know. Well, I guess this isn't this. No, it's not an image. This is also text, but it's not clickable, so it's going to be hard to reach you. Okay. So I would look look for ways to make it easy. Up, um, oh, Karen is back on saying she lied. It was a month ago, and get the paper get the paper copy. The uh, the online version of the story didn't have anywhere near as good details. Um, and we're, this is, Karen says she has a Pinterest thingy. Uh, let, me, let me throw this into, where is a chat? So I'm going to, this is Karen's comment. So there's a, uh, there's a link there. So go get the paper. I have to go to the library to get a copy probably. Looks like, it sounds like it's a worthwhile trip. All right. Um, okay. So then I would say, you know, so there is what you want someone to do when they like. What do you want someone to think and feel? So before, uh, you know, say. so is it you know, you, a realtor comes, clicks real estate photography. What do they need to believe, know, feel in order to hire you? Uh, then I'm a photographer that can produce the kind of pictures they want to advertise their homes with. Uh, they want to, you know, immediately call me and take out their wallet or whatever and order a tour or uh, photos. Okay, what, what do they want for themselves? Let's let's imagine uh, they're they're the beloved, and all we want to do is is fulfill their every wish. What's their wish? What's their big wish? They, they want to sell their house at this point. Typically, they've already had a listing that they signed. With a client, they need photographs for their website or a virtual tour to advertise. Now, also, that there's there's two two philosophies in, in real estate that I know of as far as virtual tours. Some people say they really work. Uh, I want them to sell the house. Um, the other one is it's a marketing gimmick. Nobody really cares, and I just need it to sell my listing to get a listing. So. They'll say to the client, "Oh, I'm, I'm going to do a virtual tour of your house. I'll have a photographer come in, and you know, and I'll, oh, that's great. Yeah, you know, get that out." Mm -hmm. No, this is just another way to make money that has no impact on the bottom line. Right, exactly. And the other one is, oh, I need MLS pictures. That and everybody goes the MLS or some real estate uh, um, website these days to start looking at houses. So good MLS pictures are very important. I think okay, that's pretty much that's true. So. Okay, so e whether it's a virtual tour or not, everyone everyone agrees that MLS pictures are important, right? Right, right. Um, so, the, so the, they can hire you whether they believe whether they're an, uh, a virtual tour believer or not. Yes. Um, so I would I wouldn't worry about that that much. Um, if you know if the first if the first thing you want to do is just get them to have a conversation with you, there's two questions. One is should I work with you? And the second question is, what should I get from you? And okay. let's let's answer the first question first, because if we try to answer them both, we're overloading them. Okay. So, uh, see another another Karen comment. Put more marketing oh. info into the alt tags. It's the alt tag metadata that gets passed to Pinterest. Karen is a Pinterest expert. Um, oh, okay. I don't exactly know, Karen. If you're if you're uh, if you're not driving, <laughs> I'd be happy. I don't see your 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 phone is not on, so I don't know if you're uh, you're on I the phone. You that. can talk. All right, let's see if we can. Uh, I appreciate Karen's help too. 
Uh, Karen, you need to put in some sort of audio pin, like 38 pound, so that I can uh, connect your phone to uh, to this system. Uh, just uh, that's being a little crotchety. All right, well, well, I'll I'll keep an eye on your grayed out phone icon when it comes in. We'll we'll bring no. you in and you'll. You'll give us your Howard, wisdom on Pinterest. Howard, the pin, the pin that it gave me was 34 pounds when I dialed it. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's different for every person. It's different. Okay. All right. Yes. Com complicated system. Um, okay. Anyway. Um, so so you want them to uh, to first answer the question, should, should I get professional photographs? So what, what are their other options? If they're not going to hire you, and they, they do need photos, right? That's, it's not an option to just list right. the house without photos. Right. So what do they typically two, do other than hire a professional? Uh, they basically two options. They either have a camera themselves, a smaller point and shoot, and they go and take the best images they can with that, which are usually below par, or they have somebody in their office who is a, uh, I don't know, a secretary or a gopher of some sort to go out to the house and, and do that instead of themselves. Again, uh -huh. it's, you know, they can usually be uh, of a lesser quality with one of those smaller cameras compared to what the, the gotcha. gear that I use. All right, let's, let's hold that for a second and unmute Karen. Hello, Karen. Hey, Howie. Hey, um, <clears throat> whatever your name is. Kurt. 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 Hi, Karen. Hey. I'm looking at this. I mean, I've tried to do interiors photography, and it's killer difficult. And I'm, I think that might be something to promote here: how hard it is to get these this grade of pictures yourself. Okay. Because I I went and bought the book on interiors photography, and the first thing it said is take 27 lights with you. By the way, that that yeah. those double portraits above the couch look freaky to me. I take that picture out of the rotation. Uh, what was that one? There, there's one that just went through that was a leather couch with what looks like two identical portraits above it. Uh, on the, on the, um, on the, over the mantle. Uh, not over the mantle. Over the, the over the couch. Oh, let me look. It's, it's coming it's, around again. Yeah, it, it kind of looks like it's a cheaper house. It, it just doesn't look as good to me. Okay. Um. Um, you know, basically, I this is all that one. No. Next. This next. is all uh, with on-camera flash. I don't take lights with me. This is not good housekeeping. Well, stuff. you know, your stuff is doing better than mine because my on-camera flash doesn't get this great of photography. I've tried. Oh no, no, this is an added. I used the the hot shoe. Actually, I had a little a rig, but I put the flash on so I could move it around a little bit. This one here. That one. Okay. All right. Any, anyway, okay. so. Um, What were, you, what were you saying about the uh, the alt tags in Pinterest? Yeah, I, I'm I'm doing everything in Pinterest now. I'm getting huge amounts of traffic from putting my art rugs in Pinterest. And what I learned is it's the alt tag on the photo that gets passed into the Pinterest description as a default. So if people are going to pin your images, the thing that you're giving them, it right now your text is all virtual home tours because I just pinned two of your photographs onto my real estate board. Oh, and so you, you want to load up. You want to load up your meta, your alt tags with your marketing message so that people can put this stuff into Pinterest and carry what you want them to hear. Virtual home tours is meaningless. You know, you want to say, call me for, or Kurt Germond, or some way to find this, some marketing message that works for what you want people to, to do with your, these images in Pinterest. Okay, so do, Kurt, do you know what Karen means by alt tags? Uh, yeah, you get in the back the end of the thing and you, uh, and you tag the uh, image, the name of it, on the alt tag. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Hey, I, think, I think your stuff could do well in a, in a Pinterest account aimed at Los Angeles. You get more keywords, you get more exposure. I mean, you're pretty geographically limited. You're not doing interiors photography in Raleigh that I can imagine. Right. No. Uh, well, I, my, my question is, uh, how many real estate agents go on Pinterest and, you know, browse around and find houses? Uh, you, don't, you don't care about the agents. You care about the clients. The clients That's true. I said, oh, yeah, I found a photographer. I told my real estate agent I want to use them for my pictures. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. You don't care who, who calls you. You just want exposure to home people 
and and frankly you don't care if it's real estate right you want to take photography you, you can make money taking pictures of interior so it can be the decorators it can be the designers it can be anybody who needs professional grade that's true pictures of an interior and those people sure. are all over Pinterest okay now I said um, you know I'm not a Pinterest genius I have a, you know an account and I have a couple of boards uh, there is that enough or I know there's software out there that can expand the reach of your uh, images when you get on Pinterest or you know to spread uh, them out better. what's the name you of your account uh, it's probably just my uh, Kurt Grimond you know, uh, let me just double check Karen while we're waiting can you uh you have a you have a thing on Pinterest, right? You teach people. I do, I do. Can you can oh. you give that can you give that to us? Because I don't, I don't understand Pinterest. It was um, it, when I saw Pinterest was getting popular, I was just like another thing, and I I, I had a total negative reaction to it. And I'm not that you know visual anyway, but it, you know it's, it's clearly no benefit to my clients that I uh, I have this attitude. So if you could share what what you have with, with people. Because it, it, it seems valuable in so many ways beyond what I can imagine. So where where can they go? Okay, well, that my my account is Pinterest done for you with the number and a U. That's where I teach. Done. I'll put it in the board here. Okay. I said this Pinterest is telling me to reset my password right now for security reasons, so I got to go through this. It tells me you you're not doing a ton of Pinterest. Uh, no. Um, how do you know? Uh, how do I? What's your, where does your name show up? Is it as is it Pinterest.com slash whatever your name is? Um, if that Pinterest.com slash whatever account name you picked. You know, what, I, I think I want to uh, not spend all our time on this. Okay. Um, um, Kurt and I can get up offline too. Okay. Great. So, do we? Do both of you have my email address? Uh, let's see. Howie at AskHowie.com. If you oh. can't figure out how to get in touch with each other, just uh, email me, and I'll uh, I'll I'll do a, a matchmaking. Yeah. Well, thank you. Okay, we just wrote that down. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm gonna Hi. I'm gonna um, Karen, okay. I'm gonna forward your. Um, and Howie, the the bigger point here from your point of view is, uh, just to to pass it back over to your lead. Pinterest is lead generation for people like Kurt. And your job as Howie is still to get people to convert once they get to the website. I can send people to your website all day long from Pinterest, but it's the website where you pick them up, you get the phone number, you get the email, you go on to do the conversion. Okay. All right. Well, then help me help me with one other thing because I understand AdWords traffic. I understand that there's a keyword and there's an ad and there's a context and that the person comes to a website with a certain set of expectations. Um, exactly. I understand if they do it from search. I understand if they do it from display. I don't understand that context when they come from Pinterest. Karen, can you help us? Well, it would be exactly the same. I'm looking at this picture of a dining room, and, I'm, and, and the, the text below says something to indicate this is interiors photography. Okay, but why am, why am, why am I on? I, I never go on Pinterest. So why is somebody on Pinterest in the first place? I understand why they go to Google, they're looking for something. What, what's the difference or the similarities with, with Google, Pinterest? Here's my teaching, my teaching point. Google gives you the right answer to any question that has one right answer. Google has spent the past 15 years maximizing the best answer to questions that have best answer. How do I treat gout? There's probably a best answer, maybe five or six depending on your point of view, but, but there's one best answer there. Google is absolutely useless on questions that do not have a best answer, and we've even forgotten that there is money to be made in those worlds. And those questions are things like Mother's Day gift idea, Google failed, wedding dress, Google fails, dining room decorating, Google fails, can't touch them. Pinterest can give you a thousand answers for Mother's Day gift, which you can scan in as fast as you can look at a screen. 
and you know whether any of them is right for you and your mother-in-law. So it's a whole different approach to search that we have forgotten about because we've been so oriented to the, one, the questions with one right answer. Huh. Huh. So, so guys huh. like you, you and Glenn and Perry have made money in this world where there's one right answer. Mm -hmm. And now people like me are starting to make money in the world where there isn't one right answer. All right. This is uh, this is great for Valentine's Day. This is but like exactly, the, the, the feminization of search. Indeed. Once you come back, <laughs> you know, the, uh, what I'm what I'm finding with my my Pinterest clients is they don't get the part that that you and Perry and Glenn have learned for you know that it's still once you get into the site you got to do conversion, and conversion hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. They're just coming with a different from a different answer from a different question. All right. Well, so are are they in a rush? The same way that someone from, from you know does a search, chooses something, a, a link, and they come to the site and they're going to give you three and a half seconds to to make your point or else they're going back. Is there is there more of a of a lushness, a visual, you know, that, that it's it's sort of more, it's, it's I don't know, I slower. Have, Do you know what I'm asking? Um, <clears throat> I have dropped now. Now my budget is such that you know twenty five dollars is my hot cognition limit. But I saw something I wanted the other month, and within 10 seconds, the lady had my credit card. Uh -huh. You know, so if it if it's hot hot click, yeah, absolutely. On the other hand, there's a lot of people will bookmark your stuff, will pin your stuff off your site, and put it on their boards and come back. They'll take boards into their shopping center. They'll take their boards in shopping. This is what I want. Wow. So it's kind of like a wedding registration form. I think of it as as wedding registration on the internet, walking through Bed Bath and Beyond with the barcode scanner, only now you're going around the entire internet saying I want, I want, I want, and what you pin back is a picture on some form of list saying, oh, this is what I want, and I can always come back and I can always remember it because it's a visual bookmark in a way that your basic bookmarks tools are, are useless. Really? Yeah. Wow, I thought Pinterest was all it was just for marketers to put their stuff up. Yeah, you know, you and I need to talk. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to ask everyone who's listening, um, you know, just to, to, I find this stuff endlessly fascinating, and I would much rather learn than teach. Um, but is this, is this Pinterest stuff of interest to folks, um, you know, for, for right now? And, uh, you know, would, would you like a webinar with, with Karen in the lead where I just sort of shut up and push buttons? And, uh, and how you and I, I can come over one of these, you know, week or two and, and talk and show you what I do in it. And you can, you know, we can talk and so you can get a better present under a, a better understanding of how Pinterest works in your market and your clients. Sure, that'd be great. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're getting, we're getting some, uh, some definite positivity around a, uh, a, a Pinterest webinar. I mean, it's, an, it's a no-brainer for anybody who's got pictures, and it, it's a little bit more work. I'm, I'm working on a presentation for the Chambers of Commerce and how they can represent themselves in Pinterest, and, and clearly they don't understand. They all want to, um, partly because of who the employee base is in the paid Chamber of Commerce employee um, staff chart, and they don't know how, and I think they could do a very good job in there. Uh, would that be for the city they live in and all that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Karen, thank you so much. Anytime. Yeah, thank you. All right. You, uh, I'm going to mute you back out, but anytime you want to jump in, feel free. Um, so, all right. So, we're, we're back to conversion now, now that we understand um, Pinterest. And so, what one, one takeaway is... This doesn't just have to be about realtors, although um, it makes sense to to kind of speak to them as a niche. Uh, I never even approached it as a, like getting a hold of the client as opposed to the realtor. I mean, because the client says, hey, I want a virtual tour by this guy. The realtor is not going to argue with them. They may say, I have my own photographer. Well, I said, I like this guy's pictures. Oh, okay, you can use him. You know, they don't care, I don't think. Right. So one, one thing I would like to... To see, so you know, every uh, realtor I've seen in the last 
10 years has a decent digital camera. You know, it's not the teeny one they slip in their pocket. It's, it's probably not the, the giant SLR with a, you know, eight foot lens, but it's, it's a pretty decent thing. And they, and they're proud of it because it takes better pictures than they've ever taken before. And they keep it in their, in their pocketbook or their briefcase. And I would love to see a comparison. Every one of these photos that you've taken, I'd like to see the same thing with a point and shoot by That's a non-professional. Great, yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit addicted to audio video gear for my marketing. So no matter what microphone I have, I always want the next one. And how do I decide whether to get the next one? I, I go to sites where people do comparisons where they'll, they'll say, okay, here's, here's me talking into the blue snowball, here's me talking into the blue Yeti, here's me talking into the, uh, the road, roadie podcaster, and I can just sit and listen and see the comparison. And I can see, okay, yes, the quality of that $200 microphone is a hell of a lot better than the quality of that $60 microphone. Okay. Uh -huh. So, you know, what you, what you want to tell people is that what, the, what they have been doing is not, is not enough. Now, if people type in real estate photography, um, I'm not sure if they're looking for tips on how to do it themselves or if they're looking to hire someone. Um, we, can, we can do a quick check. So if we, if we just do... Um, so we say Los Angeles real estate photographer. Photographer, er. Right? Are, are you? Is that your keyword, photographer or photography? I think we'll try photography. Because because those two could be very different. Uh, Let me see. Well, now they're. I mean, they're both. Uh, they're both photographers. Uh, so that's so that's the other thing that you are going to experience, it looks like, is a lot of competition. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of competition out there. No so, about it. Now, if, if you look at the, uh, the first listing, Erica Grammer, that's the site that I liked a lot, so I changed mine from a blog and kind of took my and copied his, uh, the first organic listing. I copied his okay. site right there. And we can click on it because we're not charging him yeah. any money. Yeah. And there it is. Okay. Uh, no, he uses a different technique for his photography than I do. And he actually said he doesn't. The HDR got very popular a year or two ago, where you take several images of the same uh, scene and then merge them all together. He's got a much better camera than I do also. Uh -huh. But anyway, he, he doesn't even shoot this way anymore. He, uses, he went back to lights. But anyway, so you know, that's kind of like what I took mine off of because I liked it. Okay. Uh so the question is, um, why should they choose you as opposed to any of their other options? Exactly. So we, there, there either exists a difference or we have to create a difference. We have to create. Okay. We, so when you say exactly, that makes me think that there's, you don't really have a great answer to that right now. No. I mean, a lot of times for to, uh, a real estate agent, they want a, a decent picture, and they want it cheap. So price could be a big factor. Well, you're, you're cheaper than the others? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. So, so what, what's, your, what's your answer? Is, is there a, a difference between you and uh, the, the, this, this list on the Google page that makes you the obvious choice for anyone? Uh, no, not really. There's nothing. I mean, everybody takes decent pictures that would work well on MLS or, you know, virtual tours. A lot of these people here don't do virtual tours, so they just throw it up as a, an add-on. Most of them are like MLS-type pictures or people that want to uh, have brochures done for their houses where they put them out on the uh, post so people can see them driving by. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we look at the ads here, uh, so sell your listings fast, discounts, uh, amaze your clients with our tours, sell your home easily, uh, so those, those, those are the messages 
Realtors who use our photography for service sell homes faster. Uh, so there's there's no there's no quick web fix for not having a a, a differentiator, a unique selling proposition. Um, and I don't think we we, don't really, we can't really like spend the the two or three hours it would take to to create one, but we can start we can start moving in some right directions. Okay. Uh, so, first of all, what, what proof do you have that when people use your work, they sell their home faster for more money? I mean, if I advertise that way? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what, it seems yeah. like that's what they're looking for. Right, yeah, so what proof do they have? I have no idea. Right, so if, if you could say, you know, if you could do some research and... Like how, how many homes have you taken photographs for? Me, hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds. Can you can you collect data on what they sold for? Um, yeah, somehow I could probably get in there. I'd have to yeah. you know get an MLS account or something and find out what the selling price well, was. Okay, well put your let's say you could do that and you could somehow compare it to other homes and. You know, you could find a uh, another comparable listing that maybe had the same, uh, you know, appraised value, and you found that yours sold for three percent more okay. than a house that, that had, you know, amateur photography. So in, imagine your prospect, and you say, "Look, here's the data. When I take pictures, homes sell for more money." Okay. Would would that be compelling to them? Oh sure. Yeah. So 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 you may, that may be your differentiator because I don't see anyone doing that. Um, if I had proof like that, that would that my ad would be all about that. That would be the, the the only thing I would talk about is check out check out the data. Homes I photograph sell faster and for more. Okay. If you have You've taken on hundreds of homes. Do you have testimonials from realtors and homeowners? Um, once in a while, you get a testimonial from a realtor, but you know it's just business. You know, so they're they use your service and you get paid, and everybody's happy. So, well, so do you, can you can you ask for that? Uh, sure, I could ask. Yeah. I would, you know, if you imagine imagine they come. Oops, I just knocked my headset off. Imagine they come to your site, and the, the main message is check out check out these happy clients of mine. Okay. Uh, I don't see anything nope. that's, that, that has, gives any proof that you get the results that people actually want. Okay. Um, oh, Karen's got more. She's got, she wants to know <laughs> if you're using house.com, H-O-U-Z-Z, or Z-Z, Andrew. Uh, I'll, I'll, it's a portal site for people in the home trades. No, never heard of it. <laughs> Neither have I. <laughs> I'm the one I probably should have, though. <laughs> well, so we go. I'm sure. I'm sure now that you know about it, you'll meet a lot of other people who don't. So you'll. We're we're, we're all downstream from someone. Uh, so. Let's, let's, so, there's, so one thing is is collecting that proof, and that'll take a little bit of legwork. And you, you know, if you know anyone who's uh, who's into sort of statistics or or thinking about things like that, or spreadsheets or sort of financial analysis, you might have to take them out for coffee and say, "Hey, I'm trying to establish my value. Um, here's the type of data that's available to to people in the real estate industry. You know, how might I put this together?" And I can I can just I can see you know a bar graph with okay. you know the big the big green bar is houses that hired you and the little red bar right next to it is houses where they the, the realtor took photos with their one hundred and thirty dollar Canon. Okay. Um, yeah. No, so there is one. I mean, in the market, it varies so much as far as you know. There are very few houses on the market right now, so there's a lot of bidding war going on. So you're 
photographs may not mean anything at this point. However, but the MLS listing, I guess I probably ought to go after something like that or brochure photos. Uh, yeah, um, and I, I don't, I don't know the market, but there's always, you know, the, the even even if there's a bidding war, there's a there's a floor, right? People, right. and the more they want the house, the higher the floor. Yeah, exactly. Um, so another thing I'm thinking is I don't know if any I haven't looked at the other websites, but I don't know if any of them offer advice on how to stage your home. So if someone's hiring you and they're, they're kind of going to do it themselves, what if you had a guide that you that people could get from you on do's and don'ts of preparing your house to be photographed? Okay, again, the, the realtors know that a uh, client, uh, you know, a prospective house seller would not necessarily know that. Because <clears throat> staging is, you know, is right. Used. And, and what about, you know, so the realtors know it. What if they had a document that they could download from you and give to their client that had your name and phone number and email address and website on the bottom of every page? Okay. Do you know? Do you think the realtor wants to explain seventy-five times that you have to wipe the peanut butter stains off the curtains? <laughs> okay. I thought they. I thought they added. You know interest myself, but you know, I was convinced otherwise. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, just how many, you know, how many tchotchkes do you have out on the roll top? Um, you can show photos, you know, I mean, you can make a beautiful PDF document that would show here's a good, here's a good uh, arrangement, here's a bad arrangement. What do you do if you have this problem? Your bathroom's too small. Do you, how do you, how do you I don't know, all this you know a ton of stuff about what makes a good picture that almost nobody else knows. Maybe other other photographers know it, maybe they don't, but if you're the one who gives away the information, you're the one that people trust. Right. Okay. I mean, do you realize how many people out there know AdWords at least as well as I do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, at least two. You know, <laughs> you know possibly several thousand. Uh-huh. Uh, but the more the more information you share, the more you present yourself as helpful. So helpful, you know, and generous with information does two things. First of all, it 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 makes people think you must be a nice guy. Okay. And second, it makes people think oh, he must be good. All right, so so you can attain authority. Um, just by and, and this isn't creating a whole t- bunch of new stuff. This is you. You already have all these photos. You have this portfolio, and just organizing it in such a way that makes you the obvious choice. Right. Now, w- w- one thing you may want to work on is your own confidence, because I'm hearing in your in your responses that you know, I don't know why they would choose me. You know, uh, someone. So this guy's got a better camera than me. Uses a more advanced technique, like uh, you know, right. find a place to believe in yourself. Okay. Um, and if you're not thrilled with the work you're doing currently, um, you know, get better. Get, get better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for playing. Uh, sure. I mean, gorgeous photos. You know, you you definitely have the goods. This isn't someone, uh, you know, aspiring to something that they can't attain. Okay. So I think it's a matter of connecting the evidence, um, expressing the confidence, and and going out there helpfully. And I'm curious today before before we let go of Kurt, if anyone else has advice, thoughts. Uh, that I haven't mentioned, or that Karen hasn't mentioned, you can type them in to the questions box. Um, I went on and checked a, um, my other blogs. If you type in uh, Real Estate Photography Los Angeles, the other, my two uh, web blogs come up. One's a pay-per-click and one's down about five uh, or six on organic listing. All right, where are you? Uh, maybe it's not coming up on yours. 
Oh, there it is. It's down, uh, let's see, one, two, three, this one? four, fifth, that one right there. Yeah, that's a, a WordPress blog. Okay, yeah, it looks... I pretty much, you know, just copied it over. I mean, that's not can't be WordPress. It's got to be. Yeah, it is. It's got to be WordPress. It looks got like the one here. Let me check it out. I wonder if I just took the uh, the name and threw it over and forwarded it. Because that doesn't look like a WordPress blog to me. Well, it looks like identical to what we were just looking yeah. at. Photography. Let me go back again. Hang on. Oops. Okay. Real estate photography. Los Angeles .org. Uh, yeah. uh, Eric wants to know: Should you do a keyword density report and a keyword spy report on your most aggressive competition coming up at the top, so you can see what's successful for them? Um, I would. I would say. Yeah, you definitely want to use competitive analysis to figure out what keywords are working for your competitors. Okay. Um, I would focus more on right now on a uh, a well converting pay site on, uh, okay, yeah. on and getting the messaging right. When you get the messaging right, Karen can send you all the traffic you could possibly want via Pinterest, and and then you can start you know buying keywords knowing that. Uh, you can convert them into value. Right. Okay. Yeah. This domain name is just forwarded over. It's not. Uh, I used to have a blog on it, and then I took it off and put this one. Okay. On. Okay. All right. So, uh, Kurt, do you feel like you uh, you have some homework? Oh, this is a big help. I really appreciate your help, Howie. All right. A pleasure. Thanks for playing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Bye bye. All right. Uh, let's do one more. Uh, anybody got something, Andrew? I'm st I'm still resisting, but I'll. Uh, I may have to capitulate if no no one uh, types in a. Uh, and have, see what that is. Ooh, hydraulics. All right, something else I know nothing about. So, Eric, you ready to play? Eric, hello. How's your audio? Nothing yet. I miss the old days when we used telephones. All right, Eric is calling in. Uh, in the meantime, let's. Uh, what, what do folks think about the site that's up on the webinar right now on the, on my screen? Central Hydraulics Inc. Premium Eaton in Flexmaster Air Equip Hose and Fittings Distributor. And Factory Direct Distributor of about 32 different brands. Uh, Kurt wants to know what my PhD is in. It's in uh, Health Studies, which I spin in this world as convincing people to do things they don't want to do without using any money. So uh, it's, it's much easier to convince people to do things they do want to do using money. So <laughs> I hope that, that uh, positions me correctly. All right, let's see if Eric is... Hello, Eric. Are you there now? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. You can sp speak up a little bit. Okay. Is that better? All right. Cool. So, um, what what in the world is all this? We we basically sell these products um, all across the internet, across the world, and domestically. And mainly the um, the white motors. This is actually a work in progress. We're coming up with this site that is informational for all of the product lines that you see on the main page. 
and then we offer the product list on the left. So no matter if they're going to the site and they know what brand they want, it's right in front of their face and they can click on it. Like for example, White Motors is one of our sections that's completed. And then it'll come up with a visual guide of every motor because these are what people are used to seeing and they're identifiable enough to where when they click on one of the motors, say like the 500 series that's up at the top right of your screen, it then brings them to all the technical information for it. Um, we don't, until the end of April, we will not have online shopping cart ability. We're just upgrading our software to handle that. But we plan on making it to where people can order right from the site. Right now, it's just an informational site that we send all of our customers to. Um, basically, I'm pretty sure we've, we've got the alt tags are set to be put in. We're just starting the SEO portion of it. But basically, we have the informational side of it up, and the part numbers are going to be listed at the bottom for relevancy. They actually already are. If you go back to the main page and click FlexMaster, which you can click that top link, and it'll bring you to Flex to the main page as well. When you click on each one of those, it, the part numbers are automatically getting pulled from an SQL database based on where what part numbers they're looking for. Um, basically, like I said, we were we're trying to keep everything within three links unless we absolutely can't, like with the FlexMaster page, because there's just so much information. If we put it all on one page, it would overload the user. So we made it as, um, if, if you're a purchaser looking for this stuff, we made it as informational as possible, but also as easy to follow as we possibly could. Okay. Um, so, um, so what help would you like? Basically, we are already um, going in and creating databases and pulling from the database with with selects. But do you happen to know if there's a way that we can take that SQL database and generate pages from each one of those? Like, if we were to put the link in the database, could is there a way, of course, by the time we're done, we have over 150 product lines, and each one of those product lines is going to have at least at least 5,000 part numbers or more. Some of our lines have 200,000. Okay, so are you asking for organic or AdWords? For um, organic or, or AdWords, really. I know you can't, I've tried to specify per part number in AdWords, and they tell me that I can't do that because there's not enough search volume. But what I'm trying to do is get up, get that part number on the page as many times as possible and in as many ways as possible in mm -hmm. order to in order to climb the organic ranking. Okay. So before before we get into that, yeah. Um, and the answer, by the way, is I have no idea. But uh, okay. Mike Mike Marshall, if you're still on the call and you have anything to offer. Um, Give a shout in the question box. I will gladly bring you in. My my question is more about. So I I have no idea what any of this is about. So I'm clearly not your prospect. Sure. But is your prospect someone who's likely every time they need one of these pieces to go online and search, or could yeah. you have a strategy of kind of getting to know them and having you be, you know, the obvious choice? So they just pull up your website or give you a call as opposed to doing a fresh search every single time. Yeah. Well, we actually, we handle, well, the customer service, of course, is first whenever it comes to stuff like this, because when they're broken down, they need it right away. So we strive to give them their parts the next day if they need, if possible, and we have a really good inventory to do that. So once they're with us, they generally stay with us. Okay, um, so, so, so if that's the case, I would, uh, I would make that a big deal on the home page or wherever they land. Gotcha. Next day next day delivery most of the time. Yep. Gotcha. And um another thing we're we're currently I have the um AdWords campaign divided out into mobile, uh display network and um uh, they're they're broken out into each campaign has its own or each 
Search Network has its own campaign. I actually had a Google rep that was able to help me with that, and I've followed your books, and <laughs> we've we've got that pretty well. So we're actually we're advertising to all the English-speaking countries in the world, and that we're getting a pretty good uh, return on it. Um, the main thing now, again, was to get into the organic results. We already come up for Eaton Flexmaster. We come up, I think, seven out of ten times. On right. The I am. I am not an organic guy. Gotcha. So I don't want to embarrass myself by telling you the little I know. Okay. That's um, I, you know, here I want. To, I want to think in terms of your prospects and developing. You know, so we can talk about what the, what their needs are. It seems like the the keywords are pretty darn obvious here, like the yeah. the, the part number, yep. the brand the name, and the part and number. Name. Yep. Um, the brand name and part number. I guess my main reason or my main question was, aside from putting it up in say PDF format, maybe putting it up in document format, and also having it listed on the page, um, in in the on the actual web page, um, is there anything, and aside from also listing our highlights, like we ship the same day, and um, we have a very large inventory? Well, so yeah, you want you want to think about what what their other options are, why they want to buy from you. I mean, you certainly look like a big player. You know, when I see this, yeah. uh, I don't. You know, it's not it's not the world's best. Um, design site, but it might be perfect for this market. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, Karen, if, if, if Central Hydraulics is a Pinterest play. Um, you know, it's, it sounds like people come to this site and they they basically know what they want. They don't they don't have questions the way someone would have questions about real estate photography or sure. you know w weird stuff like they they kind of know. I need this, so it, and it's almost a commodity to them. They don't yeah. need a ton; they just want to kind of look at the specs, make sure it's the right thing, and then yep. just place the order. Yep, pretty much. Uh, so so we tried to highlight that by, again, with the white with the white part, we made it to where it was easy to find. Usually, when people come to us, they're looking for the motor, but they also need the parts breakdown, and they also need the um, the catalog information that shows them all the specifications. Right. We made that as easy to find as possible, creating the Adobe Edge. Uh, we wrote it all in HTML5. We created the slideshow that's on the, the white motor page with Adobe Edge to where it's all in text. It's not just flashed where it's not, mm -hmm. you know, it's not being found. So we're trying, we're trying to optimize everything like that. It's just... Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, there's also there's other places I guess you could put it if you do things on SlideShare.net. Um, if you if you put up the specs on Scribed. Um, yeah. We're using Scribed, you do, and um, there's another one called Ublisher that we've had pretty good luck with. We basically create the PDFs, and I've had i we've had Scribed for quite a while, and we've seen good uh, return out of it. Okay. All of all the PDF sharing sites, basically, I try to submit to as well. Okay, so I don't think there's much I can help you with there, but I'd like to go in a couple of weird directions if you're game. Perfect. Yep. Um, so tell me about the company. How many how many people are at the company? What do you do there? There's 52 employees. We have five locations throughout Florida, and um, within the last five years, we've become the second largest white motor distributor in the country just from putting the part numbers online. Our older website is centralhydraulics.com and it was written in front page by an ex-employee and basically six years ago whenever I started um, I took over that and wanted to put their part numbers online because I used to buy parts that way. I would search for the part number and whatever was the first page that came up with the best availability and price, I would right. purchase off of them. Okay, so, so if, I, if I went and visited the company, what's the vibe? Like, what, what do you guys like? We, our showroom's basically set up as informational as it can for uh, each one of, or for all of our products that we sell. Mm. We do sell a lot of different products, so it's hard. Yeah, I'm, 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 ask, I'm asking a sort of different question. I wasn't clear. Oh. Like if I were to hang out with you guys and then have a beer with you afterwards, like who are you? 
what's what's the personality of the company? Uh, we basically um, it's a family-owned company and uh, really down to earth and whenever uh, and we're just all about customer service. All right. So here, here's the weird place I think about going is featuring yourselves as, a, as in a supporting role because right now this looks like a website of a company where it would be very hard to get a person on the phone and form a relationship with that company. Yeah, we're we're actually the opposite as far as we don't have uh, voicemails ever. You always get a human whenever you get onto the phone. There's always one-on-one -on -one customer support. So as far as the big corporate mentality is gone because we want the user to understand that when they call in that they're going to get a human being and their problem is going to get resolved before they get off the phone. And okay, and you realize that this website says exact opposite. Yeah. <laughs> so I would have, you know, we don't have voicemail. Yep. When, 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 when you call us, we answer the phone. I would have pictures of people. Definitely. Um, I'll take you to another site. I've, I've used this as an example um, many times. Okay. But, but it's, never, it's never actually um, been relevant before the way it is now. It's asepco.com. And so I don't, I don't really, I don't understand what you, know, what you do or whatever, but, but the pictures look similar. Sure. <laughs> right? yeah. there's, there's hunks of metal with like moving parts and holes in them. Yeah, definitely. Hard to so, find parts, basically. <laughs> so what they, what they did, and this was uh, the company that was started and, uh, and run for a while by Tom Hubiar, who, uh, who passed a couple of years ago, who was a, a friend and coach and mentor of mine. And they sell valves to the pharmaceutical industry. So basically, you've got a giant vat of expensive gloop. And yeah. this is the thing that if it fails, all that gloop ends up on the floor. Gotcha. So important, um, but not very exciting. Yeah. Well, well, what he did is he said, Let's, let us form a relationship with our customers. Because we're kind of like them. And this was all, you know, sort of engineers in the pharma in the pharma world and material engineers. So one of the things they did. Um, now they have a monthly newsletter, and the owner is a wine lover, and they're out, they're out in uh, California. Okay. So you know, they grow wine, they grow grapes, and have wine in California. So one of the things they did is every every month they give away a bottle of wine to one of their customers. Okay. Everyone who signs up for their newsletter. So they've got this little, you know, sort of family thing going on. Then they had the Engineers Pub, which they created as a place, you can see it here, uh, a place where people would drop by for lunch and after work. They would trade funny stories and tricks of the trade, um, troubleshooting tips, industry news. They tried to create a hangout. And this was a decade before Facebook. Yeah. Um, they have things like jokes. I don't think they've updated this in uh, a long time because this was uh, so joke pictures. Yeah. No, looks like uh, looks like they've taken it off. Uh, I see what you mean, though. I see interact make make more of a relation with the customer instead of it being so cut and dry, basically. And, and right, and it doesn't get in the way. It's not like up front. But it's in the background so that you can see. Like when you walk into a room, there's a lot of things that go into making a room comfortable for you to walk into. And you yeah. don't notice them unless they're absent. Yeah, I hear you. And so, so you can do things like that. I, I love this one, like the engineer's view of the sexes where the man has like on-off yeah. toggle switch. and. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and so, so this, they also, um, now they make their own stuff. So, um, you know, they have, they, have, they have a little bit of a different value proposition than you do, but I, I get, I get your idea with that, and that makes a lot of sense. We actually, and we're, we didn't even submit this site through Google Dashboard yet. We're still basically just using it for people that call in. It's getting relevancy, but like I said, we're we're in the develop, process development phase of it, and we're we're starting to starting looking for ideas like that. So that's exactly what I was the kind of input we were looking for. 
We actually had a Google Voice widget at one point on our central hydraulic site that kind of highlighted, hey, you can call us at any time. We're here to talk to you. We'll get you the parts out uh, the next day. But yeah, I need to highlight that more on this page and start to focus on that side of it more just so that the so we don't look so corporate. Yeah, because it, yeah, it sounds like you're not. Yeah, we're definitely not. And, uh, you know, back to the Valentine's Day theme of love, like I would, I would have, you know, you're, you have two missions. One is to get the right part out as quickly as possible and make sure that everybody's happy and, and there's, you know, any problems or trouble shot. The second is to make their day. Like, who, you know, think about who are these people? What, what do they find funny? What bugs them? Um, and and speak to that. If you you know if you start sending out all, every, all of your customers and you send out a newsletter that isn't even about your stuff, but just about the world that they're in, funny stories. Have them um, put up, you know, submit funny things that have happened. You know, my crappiest day at work, or you know a um, the you know hydraulic failure stories. Yeah, definitely. That's a good one. Because we definitely we had we had a thing internally called the rig of the week, and it was whoever brought a hose in with the most duct tape on it that it actually held up. Yeah. <laughs> so even <laughs> something like that <laughs> that wouldn't offend somebody, but it would make it funny for the other users. Right. Absolutely. All right. Well noted. And um, yeah, basically just. Look, looking for ideas exactly like that. Um, we have the container for this. Again, you'd have to actually know the product lines, and then you'd understand the the hierarchy of the whole FlexMaster and and clicking through. And but it, another thing that we have to stress a lot more, and you've got to point that out and make me realize it more, is that for the people that know absolutely nothing, they're not even going to know what to click on. So we have to press that issue that you can call at any time, talk to a human being from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern, and uh, that we, if, if for some reason you missed us, may, be sure to call back because we definitely have the inventory. We definitely have the capability of getting it to them the next day if they're willing to pay that price, and that's what people need in this industry. So we need to... Right. So you might consider somewhere on the home page a, uh, a video introduction to, to your company. Just have someone say, hey, welcome, Here's here we are, here are the folks who answer the phone, here's where our, our, our inventory is, here's some of the guys. Sure. Uh, Definitely. Or at you know, least a slideshow introduction, if, at the least, to where people feel engaged right off the bat. Even if they don't call in, they know that they could, and this is who they'd be talking to. Right. So maybe, maybe you should get Kirk to come out and take some interior photos for you. Definitely. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, also, you know, just just the fact, you know, that, again, this is a big ass monitor, but you your your site is built to go all the way out. So I have to, if I want to read this, I have yeah. to read a really long line. Yeah, I hear Oops. you. Uh, come on. Right, yeah, well. we tried to do that for the auto fit since it's HTML5. We had to make sure that every aspect of it worked on iPad, iPhone. Yeah. Well, you could probably put this stuff in the table. Okay. And, you know, the same, the same width or put it to the side. You have a lot of wasted space here. You can just put it up to the side. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you, know, I'd, I'd, you know, can you, can you, I would also feature short, bi interesting bios of the people who work at the company. Like, who would you just talk to? You know, this is Tracy. She's got three golden retrievers, and she, uh, you know, likes yeah. uh, hiking in the Everglades. Yeah, definitely. Because, you know. Sounds we, good. People like people. Oh, yeah. Karen says that Duck brand duct tape has a good Pinterest account. Okay. So if, maybe the rig, the rig of the week would be a good uh, Pinterest play. Yeah, definitely. All right. All right. Well, I hope, I hope that was helpful. Yes, definitely. I appreciate your input, and uh, thank you for the critique. Oh, you're very welcome. All right. You have a good uh, one. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right. Well, I think uh, that's it for today. We got a couple uh, very different sites, but I hope it was useful. I'm really appreciative of uh, 
of Karen's input. Karen's got another one for you. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just quickly chat this to everyone. Pinterest.com slash hydraulics. So, uh, all right, Karen, we got to get together because you know a ton of stuff that I need to know. All right. Um, oh, Karen says wrong link. So we're uh, we're waiting for the right one here, right? Ah, red tuxedo hydraulics. Did you just make this one? There it is. While we were talking, Karen made a Pinterest thingy. I got I got to figure this thing out. It's just it's too big for me to keep ignoring. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining. Um, anyone who would like, uh, oh, I almost forgot that I actually have to make a living. So anyone who would like private consulting on any of this stuff, on uh, website marketing, um, I have a, a team that does conversion rate optimization. So they take all the ideas and actually test them. Um, and of course, we do AdWords management, and I do um, personal and private coaching and website consulting. And if you liked what you heard today, you can reach out to me, Howie, at AskHowie.com, and I would love to do it for money. So take care, everybody. Have a happy Valentine's Day, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.